Hi, I'm Tara. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be creating this cute little pop-up card with a bunch of cardstock and I want to go over the supplies. Now this is a really, really easy card so don't run away. Don't be afraid. It's simple cardstock that we're using. You could use scrap cardstock. I even have these little mini pieces or mini packs of cardstock that I use with my Cricut Joy and this is the perfect project to go ahead and bust out scrap pieces or little cardstock or if you have full sheets of cardstock, whatever you have lying around, this is going to be the perfect thing for you. And all I did was use this glue stick to put this whole card together. However, there are all kinds of glues that you can use. This is a craft bond fabric and paper glue and all of these dry clear. And then I have Aline's original tacky glue also try dries clear and it has an ultra strong bond. So I might play around with some of these and see how they work out. But if all you have is a simple glue stick, this craft bond extra strength glue stick by Elmer's, excellent. And then we're going to go over some of the supplies that I'm going to be using. So when I did this one, I actually used a pattern paper for the background of the trellis because I wanted it to look like you were looking out like over an ocean. So I used this patterned cardstock. And if you can see that bottom area kind of looks like sand and water. And so I cut out a portion of that for this particular project. And I'm going to just do a plain blue for this one. So that's all I'm going to use. And then for the pillows, I'm actually using a patterned um, like leaf design. And I know that that leaf is not going to show up because these pillows are very tiny. But I'm going to use this patterned cardstock just a little tiny corner to do my pillows that are going to go on the little chairs for our um, terrace or patio card. And you are also going to need so all the colors of cardstock that you could possibly want. And also for those cardstocks before I move on, well, let's just while I have it in my hand. Use your light grip mat. So you're going to want a light grip mat to cut these projects with. All you really want when you're using cardstock is for like this particular project. You just want a mat that's tacky enough to hold that down for it to do the cut without the cardstock shifting. But you want it to not be so tacky that you're going to tear your cardstock or your patterned cardstock, which is a little bit thinner. You're going to want to make sure that the cardstock you're using is solid core. I made a mistake or just learned from when I picked my greenery. I actually used some greens that did not have solid core, which meant that the side edging on them did not have color. It was white or is white on the edging. And I just didn't really care for how that turned out. So make sure that you do stick to solid core cardstock with your scraps or whatever cardstock you are using today. Now, as far as the patterned paper part, that's only gonna be a little tiny part of my design with the little pillows. And then the backing on this one, it didn't affect anything because you're not seeing the edging. But this time I'm just going to use a plain blue background. So this is really easy. I hope you guys aren't scared off. I want to reassure you and assure you that this is simple. This is really easy. It's just going to take a lot of pieces of cardstock and some time to do the cutting. And the uploading from Creative Fabrica for this particular design is so easy. Like, I promise you, it's easy. I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we are going to be using Cricut Design Space to create this project. However, first we need to 
download the file from creativefabrica.com. If you don't already have a membership or a, an account, go ahead and look in my description in this video and, and or in the comment section, I will leave a link for you to get an extra little special uh, annual membership price. So make sure you click in my link below. Okay, so we're going to click in this drop down area and we're going to click on 3D crafts. We're just going to scroll down just a little bit. You can see they have a lot of 3D projects. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to download a file from Creative Fabrica. So I'm going to go ahead and click in this cute little cozy cat card because I do not have this one downloaded yet. I'm going to click download. Okay, and then you're going to need to click open file. Okay, so once you get it to this screen, then you're going to want to extract all. So you're going to click on all of these and then you're going to click extract all. And then I'm going to select the file to put this in. So I would like to put this in my Creative Fabrica file. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select that folder and then I'm going to click extract. Okay. And then from Cricut Design Space, what you're going to want to do to upload a file. So this isn't the exact file that we're going to do, but I'm just going to show you really quick. We're going to go to upload. We're going to go to upload image and then you're going to go to browse. And what you're going to search for is actually the one that has the little blue wheel next to it for Windows. I am doing this from a Windows computer. So that is what I am familiar with. So that is how you would go about it. So you're going to click on that Windows file. And then it's going to come up as a cut image. And then you'll hit upload. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. You're just going to click on New Project. And this is going to be so easy. So if you uploaded your file, just like I said, it's super easy. You just click Upload and you're going to select on that image and then you're going to click Add to Canvas. Now stay tuned because there's a couple of things that we do need to make some alterations on before we click make it. The first thing that you're going to want to do is click ungroup in the upper right hand corner of your screen. So click ungroup. That way every little thing is going to cut out separately, which in this particular project is what we do want to happen. The only thing is this right here is meant to be a score line. And these right here are meant to be score lines to fold the card so that it can lay flat and it can also bump out and be that 3D image. So what we need to do is we need to actually go on the layers panel and find these images. And then we are going to edit them. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to take this image right here. So we have our little terrace railing. It's a basic cut. And then above it is actually where it should be score lines. And if you look in the operations panel at the top toolbar there, it says basic cut also, which we don't want it to do. It will cut that right off. So what we want to do is we want those to be score lines. So while we have that selected, so see how we're clicking in the right layers panel while we click right on those intended score lines, we're going to go to the operation toolbar and we are going to go scroll down and we're going to click on score. It's going to turn it into cute little hash marks that are representative of score lines. So now that we have that done, while we have this selected, we're going to hit shift. We're going to select our little terrace railing and then we are going to click on attach. So now this is going to cut out and then score right on top of our little terrace railing image. Now we have to go up and do the same thing where we have our little cheer image with the planter background. Okay, so what we want to do is same thing. Let's check this in the layers panel. 
so here it is right here. Here's the image that we are taking a look at. And then here's where we want score lines and it says basic cut. So you're gonna go up to the top left operation toolbar and you're gonna scroll down, click score. And then you're gonna hit shift. You're gonna select over that image and then you're going to click attach. Okay, so now this is all together. It's going to cut and score on this one image, okay? So that is one thing that we have to do. Another thing is to make sure that all of the colors that we need for our cardstock cut on the proper pieces of cardstock, I have a couple alterations that I have to make. So I could leave this teal color, but I'm going to change it be just for my memory's sake. So this is actually going to be a patterned um, like green color. So I'm going to pick a really light green that's not selected so far. And then I'm also going to select. So if you click on this, this is two different layers. I'm going to go over to the right layers panel and I'm going to click on just the teal part. I'm going to change that to the green that I'm using also. And then the center part. Oh no, wait our little teapot's going to be pink. Sorry about that. We are going to go and we are going to select on pink. Okay, so that's going to be pink. And then this little center part of this pillow, we're going to do pink too, just so that we have like some cohesiveness. And we are going to go up to the top. We're going to select on that pink. So that's going to cut on the same piece of cardstock. And then same thing, we are doing that same patterned paper. So I'm going to click on that same green color up at the top here. Now, if you get a little confused, because as you can see, when you when I click on this, there's a lot of different greens here. So I might have accidentally clicked on that one. And I'm like, shoot, how do I find to make the right green? Simply go to color sync. And then you are going to scroll down until you find that pillow. So here's my pillow. And then where's my other pillow? Where's my other pillow? Oh, I scrolled right past it. So here's the other pillow. So what you do is grab your first pillow, you click on it, drag it down. So you're going to pull it down in that layers panel. And then right when you hover over that color pillow that you want it to match, you're going to let go, release and it's going to join with that color in the layers panel color sync. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to click make it. But before you do so, just kind of double check, make sure that the cardstock colors, the number of colors that you're using match up to what you see on the screen. How many different colors of green do you need? Do you have the, all the different shades of creams or brown that you're using? Make sure that everything's looking like it should be, and then you're gonna go ahead and click make it. Now, because this is a cardstock project and we don't need to mirror, we're just gonna select on matte, we're gonna hit confirm. And as you can see, the very first little design that is going to cut out is just this little tiny area of my teapot and the inside or the patterned part that's going to go over my patterned paper for one of my pillows just to add a little accent. But look at how little that is. I only need a one inch by two inch barely piece of cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click continue and I'm going to go to my machine. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to show you the settings that I'm going to be using to cut my materials. So for this, I'm going to select on medium cardstock 80 pound and I'm going to hit more pressure. When it comes to some of the other cardstocks, I'm going to be selecting a hundred pound cardstock. And then when I do my pattern paper, I've actually found for me with my machine, we're using the 80 pound cardstock setting works fine. However, everyone's machine might be just a little bit different. So 
What works for me may not be the same settings that you will use, but hopefully it'll give you at least a baseline. And if you are going to be using all cardstock, all the same pound, you can use this new little tool in Cricut Design Space where you can just click remember material setting and then you won't have to change or edit the material for every single piece of cardstock that you place down. But in my case, I'm going to be using different settings, so I'm going to uncheck that. And now I'm going to head over to my machine and get going on cutting all these pieces of cardstock out. Okay, so I have all of my cardstocks picked out and ready to go that I'm going to be using for this particular project. So that's the first thing that you're going to want to do is pick out your colors once you have your design uploaded in Cricut Design Space. And then I'm gonna take this little Dollar Tree tray and as I cut out my pieces, I'm gonna set them all in here. So I have them all in one little spot. And then just another tip is make sure that you use the blue mat. And if you have an older mat that it's still like holding down your cardstock, but it's not as tacky, that's going to be what you want to do. And then always out of a good habit is to check your blade. So always check your blade. As we're doing this cardstock, if it seems like things are getting bunched up, you want to go ahead and just kind of like push that plunger out a little bit and just wipe it off. You can wipe it with a cotton swab or you can take foil and just kind of stab it in there if you would like to help just kind of clean that blade off. And then I'm using a scoring stylus. It may prompt you in Cricut Design Space, depending on which type of machine you have to use your scoring wheel. You can go in simply in Cricut Design Space, edit the tool, and then edit it to scoring stylus. Okay, so I'm just going to be cutting. unload your mat and you're going to want to put this face side down and this is one of those projects that you're actually going to use your spatula tool. So here's another handy tool that might be beneficial if you happen to have one already. You're just going to slide that to get off your pieces without them tearing. And you know what I was actually using a newer um, blue mat and using my well-used one is actually already starting me off on a better foot today. So definitely if you have a well-used blue mat that still holds your cardstock down, that's what you want to use for this project when you're doing the little tiny details. Okay, let's keep cutting. And now I'm going to set up my little workspace. So I like to work on these little art easels just for ergonomic posture. So I'm going to set this up and then I'm going to take this um, little cutting mat that I picked up from the dollar store. So this is what I glue on. So I'm going to set that on here and then this right here are all of the pieces. So look at that. I mean this project is really small. I feel like if you edit it just a little bit, you could even do this with the Cricut Joy. Just need a, a little bit smaller um, main base. But other than that, I think that this could just be shrunk down just a little bit in Cricut Design Space and you could do it with the Cricut Joy. Click Cricut Explorer Machines, Cricut Maker and Cricut Maker 3 all are gonna do this project super easy for you. Okay, so Look at that, all the little pieces that we need fit in this little tray and now we're gonna put them together. So I have my ruler ready to rock. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some folding of the scoring lines. And I have my original um, or my sample that I created in the background here for me to reference. But this is when you would also wanna reference the picture, the PDF that comes with your file. 
So that was a lot of cutting. I think the cutting part is what takes the longest period of time. So my suggestion is to turn on this video while you are cutting all of the elements with your, the different elements of your cardstock or your pattern papers, whatever you choose to use for this project. Turn this video on and watch it to keep you company while you were doing all the cutting with your Cricut machine. And then by the time you're done cutting all the cardstock pieces, you'll be proficient in putting this together. So what I'm doing is I am simply just putting my ruler along the scoring lines and I am bending them forward. What I like to do with score lines is I like to bend them both directions, but you can do whatever you choose whatever works for you, but I will fold them both ways. So this is going to be our back layer of our card. So we're gonna start with this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my background, which is gonna be my sky color, or like, let's imagine we're sitting on a terrace and that is just the ocean that we are looking out at. Oh, how beautiful. I'm sure some of you, <laughs> that is your view. Okay, so I have all my glues to my left. Oops. I have all my glues right here to my left, so I'm gonna be grabbing from this and I'm just gonna start with my trusty little craft bond extra strength. And I'm gonna lift this up because I'm just gonna keep setting my card down here. So I'm just gonna lift this up and run the glue stick over all of my little railing. Be careful, be careful with these dainty little projects. Okay, we're gonna take this blue ocean or sky blue, whatever, which way you look at it. I'm gonna place that on the back and then I'm gonna actually grab my brayer and I'm going to just bray this down. You could use um, a ruler, something hard to just kind of smooth over even like a, a scraper tool that doesn't have um, any like sharp edges or corners on it. Just to kind of press that down. Okay, so we are getting started with our first layer. We got that done, let's do our lights next. And actually, Um, I think I want to glue the light bulbs on first. Oops, I had this the other way. So it's going to glue on like this, just like that. But to limit the glue that I could potentially get on here, I'm going to glue the light bulbs on first. So I'm just going to start gluing the light bulbs on. Okay, my little light bulbs are ready. Maybe I'm thinking instead of using my glue stick, I'm gonna grab one of my liquid glues and give that a spin. So let's go ahead and use fabric glue, craft bond and fa fabric and paper glue. I think that's glued pretty good. And it is going to seep out a little bit, but don't fret because it will dry clear. Okay. That's another thing too, is I don't have as much play. Like as you could see with the light bulbs, when I was putting the light bulbs on, 
I could put them on and then kind of adjust them around when I'm using my glue stick where with the liquid glue you're really not going to want to do that. You're going to want to place it right down where you want it to stay. Because even though it does dry clear it's it may leave a little bit of a sheen or a glossiness where the glue dries. So we don't want that all over our nice little pretty blue background. Now we just have to add the planter and the plant, which is a couple different layers, but you're going to have the planter that this is in in the background. So the little hanger and the planter that it's in are going to show through. How's that looking? I think I'm ready to hang it on the back here. And you can put it wherever you like. It's going to cover one of the light bulbs. Let's see. I'm going to hang it like this. I think I like it right about there. Eh. Do I want one of the light bulbs peeking through? Should I do it like that? Yeah, I like it like that. Okay, and again, I'm going to use the liquid glue. Okay, I like it placed right there. So I'm just gonna press that down. Okay, so for right now, we are actually done with this back part. This just needs to dry. So I'm gonna move it off to the side and just let it dry. Okay, now we're gonna work on the middle part. So I'm going to be gluing on the stem part of the lemon tree and then we're going to take the lemons obviously and glue them on and then there's also going to be the little planter that we're going to glue and then we're going to put the teapot on and our little pillows and even though I used my glue stick last time I am going to just continue so far to using this craft bond fabric and paper glue. Okay, and now I'm gonna pop on the lemons. And I do believe that the lemons have their own little place to go, but I think that they'll fit. If you don't find the exact spot, I think that they'll fit pretty close wherever you put them. So don't worry if you're like, oh my gosh, same thing with the light bulbs. I think that they all are cut like specifically to go in a specific spot. They're maybe just a little bit different, each of them, but you'll be able to make it work, especially if these flip around and flip upside down and all the, all the things that can happen. Don't worry. What do you think? How cute is this looking? Okay, now I'm going to put the planter on. And the planter is just a little bit tricky because you do want to leave some space for the chair leg. I feel like our our mind wants to cover that, but it's actually you want to leave a space so that it's about the same size as the chair leg on both sides. Okay, 
Now I'm going to put my little teapot on and then we're going to add our little pillows. And for this, I am going to use just a little bit of my glue stick. I'm just kind of going to scrape on my glue stick and get some right on the edge there. And then I'm just going to stick that right at the top of the table there. Okay. And now let's put our pillows on. So we have one pillow that's going to go over here. I'm just going to set it there for now. And then our other pillow has the extra little pink on it. I think I'm going to have it go like that and then put that little pink design on there. And I'm just going to use my glue stick for this part. on the pillow okay and then this is just gonna go over here like that and I'm just gonna use some craft bond glue stick for this part And then my other pillow, same thing. I'm just going to use some of the glue stick and pop it right on there. I want it to be about the same level, even though the pillows aren't the exact same size. I feel like that should go up just a little bit. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, we are done with this layer. So I'm gonna lift this up gently. And we also had some score lines there. So let's let that dry and then we will do the score lines. Now we are gonna do the front part. And I think this part's like the most tedious part. So we're going to glue this on like that, and then the leaves are going to go on top of that, and then the details are going to go on top of the leaves. I am just switching it up using different glues. So this time I'm using, again, some of my glue stick. And I'm going to put some of the glue stick on the actual backing also, or the actual Part that's about to stick on, my layer that's going on next. going to keep on keeping on. We are running out of pieces to put on here so we are getting closer and closer to finishing this project up. And just a reminder this is a design from Creative Fabrica and if you don't already have a subscription go ahead and click in my description of this video to check out the glues and also there is a little link for Creative Fabrica through me in collaboration with Creative Fabrica to offer you a little discount on an annual membership if you are interested. So feel free to just click in and check it out. Okay. So if these leaves flip around on you, just Kind of do a test run before you pick which side you're going to put the glue on. OK, 
Okay, how is this looking? What do you guys think? It's so cute. Oh wait, we've got to put these over here. These little plant leaves are so cute. They look like little hearts. Okay. All right, I started to glue that one on backwards, but you know what? We have the whole um, little extra design to go on there. So I'm gonna grab that and throw that on right now. This one that's gonna go on there, and it goes on this way. So since I accidentally got glued it on, or put all the glue on the opposite side. I'm just gonna throw this on right now, and it's gonna glue on there nicely. I'm gonna put the liquid glue on the back of these. at how this is taking shape and again these glues are going to dry nice and clear so no worries there i'm going to use this liquid glue for these little veins that go in the final little pieces here and honestly on these little veins I'm just kind of winging it I'm just eyeballing it I'm flipping it around where I think that the natural vein would go but if you get confused just reference the PDF original design I just think I'm looking out here Okay, now this part just needs to dry. Okay, so now we're gonna put it all together. So we are gonna take the back part and we are going to place the front part on top of the back part, like this. So we're actually gonna fold these like that. I'm gonna take my ruler and just do a nice little crease. careful because I did a little scratch there although that's going to be hidden by the layers okay so you're going to put some glue on here and on here and then on these little tabs and I think I'm going to stick with the craft bond glue stick for this part okay so I'm going to line that up I'm going to make sure that's lined up like right on the edge there. And then over here you're going to do the same, line that up right along the edge. This is probably the only part that you really want to try to get as perfect as you possibly can. Seen that where I have some glue just kind of hanging out there. I want to clean some of that glue off. <laughs> I keep toothpicks handy in my craft room 
for like poking inside of glue when it gets stopped up but this is also a use to kind of break free of some of that glue that's just a little excessive on here. Okay, and then this part, the middle part, needs to be um, scored. So I'm going to set this part aside, and we are going to score this part. So I'm just going to take this, and where the score line is, I'm going to fold it both directions. It's just nice using the ruler to help make that nice little crease in there. Okay, so I'm going to just flip it over and do that little crease. And take your time. I got a little rushy there for a second. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are actually going to glue this on the inside like this. Oops. Oh no, I knocked my plant over. I don't want that to bend and break. That is a high possibility because that's pretty heavy and it's still drying. So let's be very careful putting this middle layer in. Okay. We just have this one little piece to put in here, so let's just be cautious and careful. Okay, so you're going to glue both of these little tabs. just going to bend and go straight in the back on the inside here. And I don't want my plant, oh I'm just getting a little worried about my plant bending. Okay. So maybe this angle would be best. You can see how we're kind of putting that in there all the way to the back and on the very bottom. Okay. Once you have that in the right spot, then you can just kind of use your fingers and squeeze that into place. How cute this turned out. Look at how pretty. And then what we can do is we can just slide it off to the side just like that. It's going to bend nicely just like that so it will lay flat inside of an envelope. This particular design did not come with an envelope. However, I have a whole bunch of 5x7 envelopes that I made a long time ago. So if you want me to do an envelope tutorial, please comment in the comment section. But all you have to do is look up a simple envelope tutorial for a 5x7 envelope and this is going to fit in here nicely. Now I'm going to let that one dry. So the cute little one that we did today. Look at the little pillows on the chairs. Is this not just the cutest ever? And then when you have it opened up, it's you're just looking at it from different angles. You'll be able to see 
Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. And we're going to get my card that I already made as my sample. And we're going to put this inside the envelope. So this one's had um, 24 hours or more to dry. So see how it's like nice and flat? And then just flatten it by tilting this off to the side. And then you can slide it right into the card. And speaking of card, I do want to mention, so like, look at that. This is a five by seven envelope. It fits in there so nice and so perfect. And then your recipient would just pull it right out of the envelope. And what I'm thinking is the background piece that you use. So I used blue for this one and then I used a pattern for this one. After you have it cut, you could flip it over and put it in Cricut Design Space and have it handwrite a little sentiment with a pen. Or you can just take an ink pen and handwrite something. Now when I'm filming this in 2023, it's uh, right before, like a month before Mother's Day. So this would be a really sweet Mother's Day card. So you could write a little sentiment with just an ink pen and handwrite something on the back of this. So when they pull it out, have it sitting out on just look at this beautiful presentation. And then on the back side will be the sweet little sentiment that you write. If you found inspiration, make sure you hit the like button. And to continue to follow me for future craft tutorials, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. What do you guys think? Isn't this like the cutest thing ever? What's your favorite part about this design? Do you love it? What are you guys thinking about different color selections? I mean, the possibilities are endless using different colors for the greenery and the pillows and the backdrop just super cute so make sure you check out my description section also i will try to link to the materials and products that i used and again this is a creative fabrica design and creative fabrica has collaborated with me to offer you a discounted annual membership so go ahead and make sure you click that link in my description or in the pinned comment section and speaking of comments, make sure that you comment and tell me what you guys thought about this card. Do you love it or what? And until next time, go check out another one of my videos.